Hello and welcome to episode 3 of this little series of writing uh, a compiler and interpreter in Rust for my little stack-based language. Today um, we're not sleepy like in the last one, so we're gonna get started with writing some code immediately. Um, what we were doing last time was uh, implementing the compiler. So we built all this compiler stuff. Today, we're going to implement two parts that I definitely want to do. Uh, first one is going to be to read from the from a file instead of from uh, just a hard-coded value. The second thing is that I want to be able to uh, actually interpret some of this code, like start with uh, the interpreter loop properly um, and start you know building some of that stuff. So um let's get into that right now so the, the first thing is that we compile uh the content as a string right so that's nice but um we actually need to read the file first if we are given a file so i want two behaviors um i want the behavior well actually i only want one behavior right now later we might want to read the program from standard in but right now we want to simply um get a file from the arguments and run it Right, so um, so we'll just do file, uh, and if I understand it correctly, then this should already work. Uh, cargo run help. They should already figure out that we're trying to get an optional file argument. Yes, it's okay. Perfect. So um, and then instead of compiling this code, which is not right, uh, not what we want. Um, we have content here that we compile. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the input file is, well, we're going to check if the input file is a source file or a binary file. Okay. So, um, first, um, that the args, um, file. So, uh, that, uh, uh sum, I think is what it is. Uh, file name is args file. If let, um, then we want to do this. And also we want to do some error handling. The other thing I want to do today, uh, oh, I said it already. I want to do the interpreter, but yeah. Um, okay, so content, we're just going to do uh, fs read to string only. Uh, just call it there because I don't feel like um, like figuring out anything else. We're just gonna we're just gonna do it like that. Okay, and then we're gonna match on that uh, match. Or actually, we can do uh, map error e print line um, error compiling code. Error compiling, and then the error. Uh, I think we get the error here, right? So the file is file name error. Okay, and then um, do we still need unwrap? Maybe that's not what I want. Then is it not map error? Not sure. We're just gonna do it like with a match, like I wanted originally. So um, match expression is really wonderful. I really, really enjoy those. Um, genuinely, not memeing right now. We already have the closing thing here. Okay, and then of course we match error. Error. Okay. All right, so then um, mm -hmm, not properly closed. Yeah, I believe that as well. Um, match, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, that's what we want. All right. Um, let's print the error. And then next. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, 
Sweet. Okay, so now we compile the file. I'm gonna test that out. Um, test MCL, push two, push one, print, print. This is the same program that we had last time and that should be, should be fine. Okay, that works. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. I didn't. It should be compile, test MCL. Okay, that works fine. And now if we take test MCL and we like put a syntax error into it, then it's gonna say unexpected token. Ush, error compiling, unexpected token, exactly what we want. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go in here and undo that. Okay, so now we have the uh, reading from the file. Now, of course, um, there's also the possibility that no file has been supplied. Um, do we care? No, I think I think we're not going to bother with it. I think we're going to just only allow files and nothing else right now. Uh, Rx file, Rx file, because I don't see a point here. So let's in uh, just having to handle that myself. Um, and this way, if we don't if we don't supply a file, it'll just say error following arguments were not provided. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, then the one thing we need to do is though if rx file and uh, well, can we do path? Um, can we do like uh, these are all self functions? Yeah, okay. Okay, we want to rx file that path. And then uh, extension uh, equals MCL. There's no way this works like that. Yeah. Extension dot to also just like this. Let's start with that. So expected enum. Option. Okay, so so it's MCLB, which is not particularly what we want. Um, Then we want to uh, e print line. Um, MCLB file supplied using to compile that code, which mean to execute it. Exit one. I mean, this is like the most boring kind of code, but we simply need this sort of thing to be, you know, on par with uh, uh, on par with the other implementation. So, um, and if we're trying to exec, um, then of course MCL would be the wrong one, but only if we haven't compiled already. Um, so if not Rx compile. And the path is that, um, yeah, we need to, we need an if anyway. So uh, if not Rx compile, then we're in the state where you want to only run something and not compile it. In which point you give it the bytecode file, a uh, pre-compiled bytecode file. So um, and at that point you want to do. Uh, Just put this here because we do want to use that. And then here we want to, instead of running the bytecode that is here, which is going to be the one from the compilation itself. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, instead of running this bytecode, we want to actually uh, read the entire file. So uh, fs read. Uh, that's right. Um, 
Um, okay. And then we want to, oh, it's a vec U8 and we want a vec of instructions, right? Okay. So, um, so we want to have a decode thing, right? So we want to be able to say interpreter um, decode instructions, but code equals that. And then we can just leave the, leave the exact same code right here and we don't need to worry about it. So now we need to implement the code instructions. Um, and uh, let's go there. So let's implement that. The way this works um, is we need to iterate over all of the uh, bytes. Well, first of all, we have to basically cast it into a, we have to read eight, uh, four bytes at a time because each instruction is four bytes. Um, eight, eight bytes? Eight bytes, eight bytes, because it's 64 bit, yeah. Um, and that means that we need to first check, um, this is going to be an anyhow result though. I think, as I said, we will add proper error types later. No, no, uh, can't be bothered. Um, then this, we're going to do like that. Okay. Um, okay. Back to that. Now. This is not called a file, this is called the con bytes. Oh, but um, that result is back new. Uh, no, it's going to be with capacity because we know roughly how many it is. It's exactly bytes dot length divided by four, exactly how many instructions we have, so we don't need to worry about it. Of course, we do first need to check whether bytes.len is divisible by two. Um, checking whether something's divisible uh, by, four, by four, by eight. Um, checking whether something's divisible, you do with modulo. So uh, if the modulo is zero, which means that the u divide and the um, what's left over at the end is zero, then it divided cleanly, like without a remainder. That's the word, yeah. So uh, modulo gives you the remainder of the division. And if the division gives you no remainder, like a zero remainder, then it's a clean division. Okay, so um, um, let's see, is there like an, a thing that I can use to make an error here? Because I don't want to, let me look this up really quick, actually, because I don't want to use, like, I don't want to keep making my own error types this early, but um, one second. All right. So, yeah, let's just do properly then. Uh, we're going to use this error because that's the obvious way to do this. And we're just going to add some errors here. So, um, derive bug. Uh, what else do we want to derive? I've got error. That's the one. That's the point. Yes. Um, and then we're going to do make an enum, right? Yeah. So I'm just left the documentation open because I don't actually know what it is. So this is a VM error. Or let's call it a interpreter error. Okay. We going to use this error. Does it not know about that? just this error, isn't it? Yep, it is. Okay, and we'll move this later because I can't do it right now. I can't do it right now. Okay, so um, invalid, uh, uh, invalid byte number, number of bytes, invalid number of bytes, number of bytes. Okay, and it's gonna be the size and then we just make this an error that says um, number of bytes must be divisible by eight. And yeah, I think that's gonna work. I think that's gonna work fine. Um, and I think I think that would so works. Do we need to like specify the yeah, position. Okay. Um, okay, so now we do 
return error, invalid number of bytes, invalid number of bytes, uh, bytes land. Um, good enough, good enough, yeah. Unsatisfied. That works though. Doesn't seem right. Uh, oh, here. Need to call into in here, not out there. Okay. Wonderful. And then we return the result at the end. In the usual case. So um, we have our vector with our result instructions. Let me just be explicit about what that is. Um, Didn't work. Okay, whatever. So, um, how do we best loop over these? I guess we could write a simple, like a really dumb for loop. Um, could we somehow group each eight bytes and uh, no? Um, what do you call it? Insert size. Yeah. Okay. That, uh, that looks good to me. Um, I guess we just wanna um make it into a slice and then do some funny stuff. What 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 are we thinking? Um we could do a um just a normal ranged for loop. Yeah, I don't see any better solution here. We could do some funny magic with like casting it to a array of I get a slice of 64 byte uh, 64 bit integers but that seems highly stupid to me so um yeah we'll just do that i mean this is also highly stupid i guess but but that's how it works you know this this kind of expresses exactly the way it works and um so each n is going to be 60, uh, 8, right? So um, 0 times 8, 1 times 8, and so on. That sounds that sounds a bit better. It's not tech, not great, but uh, push instr from u64. And we're going to take the bytes. Um, at... That doesn't really work, does it? Yeah, I guess we'll have to slice, whatever. Uh, from n times instar size to n plus one. Um, this seems really, really hard to like get correct, but, um, oh, can I not just do from LE bytes? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Then maybe I don't have to do quite as much shit to get this to work. Uh, it needs one that's guaranteed eight bytes though. So, um, that's not going to work. I've had this exact problem before and the solution is like something really dumb. So I think it might make sense to use, uh, to cast it like I wanted to before. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's figure out how to do that. So I'm going to share my screen here for the browser and we're going to figure out together how to do that. It's just a, a fun little thing to do together, I think. 
Um, Rust something something. It's called there. Okay. We want to know whether we can cast slurs into other slurs, right? Because we do want to. Uh, I don't think we can though. That that would be a really weird thing for us to have. Um, could figure out if we could parse the. Uh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, unsafe. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, is it not possible to just like read a U sixty four? from bytes because i mean you can as long as it's like a specifically sized byte array which makes sense but yeah i guess that's but that's so dirty isn't it that that seems so dirty to me because you, you can't just let me let me switch back to the code editor actually before i go completely off the rails here um i don't know which one this is Let's see. Well, professional. Um, because I this it seems so wrong to have to do so much weird copying of data. Like this is not not bad, but imagine we had to do this every instruction or some shit. Like copying a whole sixty four bit integer just to parse it. I guess at that point you would use unsafe, wouldn't you? But um, I just don't see it. I just don't see it happening. Um, um, this is one of those things, like I, I fully understand why they would do this, right? Like it, it makes sense to me why they would build a language that disallows this entirely because it's just way too unsafe. But at the same time, this is such a common operation if you write literally anything that like, I don't really, I don't really get it. You know what I mean? But whatever. Um, U64 from Aliba, it's Because now we're copying it. Uh, fuck, why? Why? Now we're copying it. I mean, it might be that the compiler figures out that there's no point in copying it and that you can just optimize it, but it still seems like an awful lot of work for just casting a fucking, taking eight bytes, which is guaranteed to be eight bytes because I'm, I'm, I'm like doing this and instar size is eight. So it's literally exactly eight bytes. Like, why can't it infer that? That's yeah that's weird but whatever let's let's pretend like that wasn't the fucking dumbest solution ever and um let's keep going so now that we have all the instructions we just return them and that should be good now if we go back to main um we now decode the instructions into the bytecode uh, array or we just use the empty one execute it does nothing which is what we want as well Mm, yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay so in this error is supposed to be if it's mcl did you mean the compiler refusing to execute mcl file that uh, which is not uncompiled let's call it uncompiled did you mean the compiler yeah okay that's nice so, um, pretty awful. That's a bit better. Now let's work on the uh, interpreter because I think that's it, right? Oh, no, one more thing. If we didn't specify to exec it, then we need to uh, take the, um, this, we need to make this path. Whoops, what? 
we need to make this path and then uh, change the extension. So that new file, um, new file extension with extension. Yeah. With extension mclb. That's the bytecode. So now uh, create bytecode. Wow. Um, oh, we need to open it. So that's fs file create new. New file, does it not work? Are you fucking serious? How does this not know that it's a file? Like, is there no write on this? Write all, thank you. Arguments are incorrect. How are they incorrect? Oh, because they're instructions. So we need to write these back into encode instructions, basically, is what we want to build, right? So we want, yeah, let's build that. So uh, interpreter encode instructions, write code. So the encode instructions function will take that and return anyhow result of a vector of u8s. Um, this is all boilerplate, I hope it's not too boring. Because, like, I know it is a little boring. Honestly. So this is the bytecode length times instar size. We don't technically need to provide this. We can just keep growing it. But it's nice to do this in order to avoid unnecessary allocations. So. So result of push insert. Uh, oh, actually, it's it's more complicated than that. So, um, we need to write a new thing on the instruction that just uh, writes it into a write uh, write two, and then we give it a slice. Results. Actually, uh, yeah, no. Let's ensure that we have enough space by just doing that. Okay, and then we write to it by just giving ourselves here and saying self dot. Um, can we do slice? No. Um, two U sixty four actually exists, right? We could just use two U sixty four. Let's use two two U sixty four. We don't have to bother with this stuff now. We'll just do that. Um. Okay. So insert two U sixty four. Uh, encode it. Encode it. Dots to, um, little Indian bytes. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, buffer. Buffer is going to be a um, array of U8s. That's exactly minster size long. And that's going to be uh, 
Can we not do that? What is it complaining about? Can't do that? How do you initialize? Oh my god. It's like these things that I never do because they're such a pain. Oh, that's, that's the one. Sorry. Like, I never initialize an array because I never make an array because it seems awfully silly, but what can you do? Buffer. Does that not work? Two LE bytes. Oh, that shit returns a... Oh my god. Is it? I'm so fucking confused. Okay, for a byte in encoded to LE bytes, we're gonna just result byte. All right. Call that a day. Now we can compile and we can So this would compile it, right? Oh, um, interpreter line 25. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, that was my mistake. I did not mean to paste that in there. When did that happen? All right. Um, And it's removed. Uh, oh, does this not? No. The compiler even warned me about this shit. Um, of course, op needs to be copy. Clone. Doesn't really matter right now. Okay, that should that should do it though. Um, no, still doesn't do it. Mismatch types. Expected that got that. Oh, of course we need to dereference it. Basically, like it's not called a dereference here. It's called a like a slice, right? So it's like is it this syntax actually that does the same thing, doesn't it? Write all s less. That's the one I want. Okay. Cannot borrow as mutable. Shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. Okay, finally. So now we're compiling it, and now we have a test MCLB file. Now let's next dump that really quick and check out if that looks good. That does look good. Because, okay, here's why. Actually, That looks slightly fucked up. Are they supposed to be big Indian? I think so. I think so. That's interesting. I, I never thought about that actually that much. I think they should be big Indian. Um that's what the that that's what the um the reference said, didn't it? A file exists. Yeah, we need to override the file. Um, create new there you go okay okay that's correct now I was gonna say like what okay it is big in big yeah yeah so um instead opcode one is a push opcode three is a print right opcode two is a pop so you got push two push one print print that's the whole program we remember. So that's wonderful. Now, if I go to exec, exec that, it will say, did you mean to compile it? Which is correct. And now if I'm trying to compile the MCLB file, it will say MCLB file supplied refusing to compile bytecode. Did you mean to execute? So those are important little things. And of course we can execute the MCLB code. Um, 32 divisible by eight it is pretty sure it is i think we just got the 
the math wrong on the interpreter checking for this because it checks for zero and it's checked for not zero. Yes, okay. So we can compile code into bytecode. We can uh, interpret bytecode and we can do everything at once. Now, um, if I remove the test MCLB file and I just um, exec and compile, I'm gonna get the same output, but no executable file. And this is wanted because you might be on an immutable file system or something. Um, yeah, that's why. Always, almost done for today. I don't, I don't want to do too much longer because it's already been thirty-five minutes. Um, but yeah, actually, that's called here just, just because I don't think it's supposed to be like I don't think we're supposed to take too long. So, um, oh, that's good. Um, actually, it does not look good. I think I must have, uh, I must have forgot to add this in the last commit. So let's do that. Okay, now we can do everything else. Uh, let's also commit the test file, just so you don't have to create it yourself later when you look at the project. Okay, so um, what did we do today? We built a, I got flashbanged, okay. I built a um, encoding and decoding of instructions to a file. So yeah, compiling. Add compiling files, reading from files, encoding and decoding instars. Cool. And that concludes the episode today. Thank you for being here. Make sure to subscribe and like and hit the bell. And uh, follow me on all my social media, which is exclusively fucking GitHub, probably. That's it. Um, and I'll see you next time.